I built the filament dry box of the future, which uses a one of its kind solid state dehumidifying element, which dries the air using electrolysis. In this video, I'll show you how these elements work, how I installed one into a Bamboo Lab AMS, and how the performance of these modules compare to regular silica gel desiccant. Let's find out more. Guten Tag, everybody. I'm Stefan, and welcome to CNC Kitchen. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Everyone can create a professional website with Squarespace. Start a free trial and get 10% off your first purchase using the link below. These are solid state dehumidifiers. They consist of a housing with two electric terminals and an interesting looking membrane in the middle. The membrane is very matte black on the one side and has a fibrous appearance on the other side. This membrane is the heart of a solid state ionic membrane dehumidifier. Other than more common dehumidification devices that condense water on a cold surface and then drain it away, this method works with electrolysis. The membrane is a sandwich of two electrodes and a proton transmissible polymer. Humidity gets attracted by the internal electrode. By applying a voltage between the two electrodes, this moisture gets split up by electrolysis into oxygen and hydrogen. The oxygen stays on the dehumidifying side, whereas the hydrogen ions can travel through the membrane and combine with oxygen on the discharge side to form water vapor. So if you add this element to the side of a container, it will slowly remove moisture from the inside. This makes a maintenance-free dry box that doesn't require draining water like with condensation-based dehumidifiers and no consumables like silica gel. I saw this device years ago on Big Life's channel and of course asked myself if we could use these to create the 3D printing filament dry box of the future. Moisture in 3D printing filament is probably one of the most underrated factors when it comes to print quality and printer reliability. Most polymers are hygroscopic, which means that they absorb moisture from their environment. Some more than others, and if you ever printed with TPU or nylon, you know how stringy and bubbly these prints are if you haven't properly dried your material. Yet, even materials like ABS, ASA, PETG or even PLA take up moisture and will degrade your print results. This is why it's not only important to dry filaments before using them, but also to keep them dry while storing and even avoid moisture pickup during printing. This is mostly done with dry boxes. These dry boxes usually contain bags of silica gel desiccant that make sure that the environment stays really dry. But is it really dry? Even though silica gel can absorb quite a lot of moisture in a humid environment, it struggles more and more to take up moisture when the environment becomes drier. Once it has picked up a certain amount of humidity, it will even not be able anymore to get to low humidity levels that are necessary to keep your materials dry. Indicating desiccant or a hygrometer in the box can help check how much it's degraded already. Unfortunately, indicating desiccant is to more or less of a degree unhealthy, and even if you rely on hygrometers, they can be unreliable as well, especially at low humidity levels. If you are by the way interested in how different types of desiccant perform, make sure to be subscribed because there is a video coming up comparing silica gel against activated alumina and molecular sieves. So could solid state dehumidifiers be the solution to solve all of these problems and make a reliable, maintenance-free dry box for our filaments? At the end of last year, I reached out to Rosal, who seemed to be the main distributor of these devices, which are actually made in Japan. And I asked them if they would provide a free sample for a test. They were super kind and sent over three different sizes of their dehumidifiers. I regularly print materials like nylon or polycarbonate on my Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon with the AMS. To keep the inside of the AMS dry, I've been using three big refillable silica gel containers that sit in the front of the machine and hold almost 200 grams of desiccant. These do their job very well, but as I said before, I sometimes struggle or simply miss the right moment for changing the desiccant and then ended up with bad prints because the nylon quickly picks up moisture even inside the box. So I thought it might be a great test to install one of Rosal's dehumidifiers in one of the boxes and compare their performance to the silica that I used before. The electrolytic dehumidifiers come in different sizes depending on the amount of humidity removal that's necessary. The intended use for them is enclosed electronics where you want to make sure that the inside of an enclosure stays dry so no condensation forms on for example the lens of your CCTV camera or your sensitive electronics. 
Depending on the size of the membrane, they can remove only a few milligrams of moisture per day, yet larger ones are able to transfer 5 to 30 grams of moisture daily. This still isn't a lot if you compare them to condensation based dehumidifier that removes several liters of moisture from your humid basement every day. Yet these devices only require milliwatts or single digit watts to run. Since I know that a roll of filament can contain several grams of moisture, I opted to install the biggest unit that I had into my AMS. The lid of the AMS has two flat sides and enough clearance to the filament roll to install a drying element. I started by taking some dimensions and then designed a housing infusion. The enclosure has two different tasks. It needs to protect the fragile membrane from damage, but it also presses the membrane against a TPU printed gasket and onto the lid of the AMS to make everything airtight. Rosal also sent me a precision and stable power supply for the dehumidifier, for which I also designed a housing to avoid electrification. I printed the parts from PETG on my Voron 2.4 and then assembled everything. I first removed the lid from the AMS and then marked the holes for the membrane and the four screws. I also needed to get power to the unit, for which I used a barrel plug. I drilled the holes, yet adding the rectangular cutout was a bit trickier. I also used a drill for the corners and then cut the sides with my Makita multi-tool. The result wasn't super clean because the blade partly melted the plastic, but it was good enough for my purpose and nothing cracked. Then it was time to install everything. Before I assembled it, I hooked up the power supply to the barrel plug and the drying element. The dehumidifier needs a precise and stable terminal voltage between 3 and 3.1 volts during operation. Since we might have some voltage drop in the wires and the plug, I hooked up my voltage meter directly at the terminals and adjusted the output on the power supply to meet the requirements. Once the electrical system was set up, I installed the barrel plug in the AMS housing, connected the dehumidifier again and added the gasket. Once everything was in place, I added the outside cover and installed the four screws. The final step was to add the lid again to the AMS and my fancy dry box was ready. One of the things I enjoy most about this job right here is that it gives me the opportunity to work with technology I would have never otherwise gotten access to. It's the same with these electrolytic dehumidifiers from Rosal. I've spent a lot of time on their website recently for the specs of the dehumidifiers and just reading up stuff. Unfortunately, their website is really hard to navigate, looks like it's 10 years old and is just not able to highlight what cool and innovative products that they have. And I unfortunately see this way too often. Your website is the first impression customers get when they find you online and this impression needs to be professional. Squarespace, who is today's video sponsor, might be the solution here. They are the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online web presence in no time. Their professional templates makes it easy to get started and then customize everything to your needs. Add a blog to write about your creations and an online store to sell your physical or digital products. Find out how simple it is yourself with a free trial at squarespace.com cnckitchen and save an additional 10% off your first purchase by using code cnckitchen on checkout. I've been using Squarespace myself for several years now and can say with confidence that creating and especially maintaining a website with Squarespace is super easy and they make sure that it looks great on any device your visitors are using. And if you're ever stuck somewhere, they got an awesome help center that will answer all of your questions. Create the website you've always wanted or replace your old one that you've always hated by going to squarespace.com slash cnckitchen for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase if you use code cnckitchen on checkout. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now it was time for testing and I was really excited to see how the solid state dehumidifier performed compared to the desiccant solution. I had three AMS units. Two of them had the big 200 gram desiccant containers that I used for the last couple of months. The hygrometers still usually showed between 15 to 25% relative humidity. They were used but still at a point where they seemed to be able to take up moisture. I thought it would be interesting to know how the apparently still working desiccant compared to new desiccant, so I only replaced the silica gel in the right AMS. I added a proper temperature and humidity logger into each unit and then closed and locked the lids and also switched on the membrane dehumidifier. The first run was empty without any filament in the AMS. After a good day, I checked the data, which was really interesting. The used silica was able to reduce the humidity level to around 25%, which might be sufficient for PLA in a humid summer, but 
probably not enough for your expensive nylon. The new silica was able to reduce the humidity in the box not only quicker, but also to a significantly lower level. After 27 hours, we ended up at 9% relative humidity in the box. Yet the big question is, how did the solid state dehumidifier perform? The initial moisture level dropped a tiny bit slower compared to the new silica. Yet once the desiccant started struggling at lower humidity levels, the electric dehumidifier overtook it and ended up at 8% relative humidity after a good day. I was seriously impressed with the result because this small device had to find against a serious amount of desiccant. The other reason why I was impressed and also surprised was because back in November last year, I did a small pretest and installed one of the smaller electric dehumidifiers into a single spool dry box, which took a whole month to get from 50% to 10% relative humidity. Yet there was one big difference. Whereas now we tested empty AMS units, in my first test, I directly added a spool of filament. You might think that the filament spool reduces the air volume, so you should be able to dehumidify the box even faster, but there's a point I didn't even properly think about. The desiccant or our solid state dehumidifier removes moisture from the air, yet the air and the spool of filament are in kind of an equilibrium. When the air gets drier, moisture from the filament and the spool gets released into the air. So over time we don't only dry the air, but also dry the filament itself. Yet I need to make clear that the amount of drying is typically less and also way slower than with a heat based drying system. So if you want to make your nylon ready for printing, you need to put it into an oven and then into a dry box. Don't dry materials too long or too hot because this will potentially damage them. In order to put some numbers behind my claims, I put a half full spool of Prusaman PLA that has been sitting in my 50% humidity office for a year now, as well as a half full spool of Prusaman PLA that was in the dry box for the three months in a filament dryer and regularly checked the weights. The roll that was stored outside lost 3.7 grams of moisture due to drying. Interestingly, almost 2 grams of that just comes from the spool itself and I suspect mainly the cardboard roll in the middle. And these 3.7 grams are 100 times more moisture than the air in the container initially held, which explains why the moisture level on the hygrometer dropped so slowly. We didn't only dry the air, but also slowly the filament itself. This is also confirmed by the fact that the roll of PLA that was stored in the fancy dry box only lost 0.6 grams of weight, so most of the moisture was already dried out. When I put this dried roll of PLA back into the small dry box, the humidity level plummeted right away because there wasn't any moisture left in the spool. Lesson learned here, if you want to store filaments in a dry box, put them in there in a dried state because this will help the desiccant last longer and not potentially undry the other spools in there. The point I wanted to make here is that the first test that I made with the AMS boxes might have been nice to see, yet the humidity inside of the box is negligible compared to what the spools of filament potentially contain. So I made a second test run and added similar spools of PLA, PETG and probably worse, a cardboard spool of PLA that were all previously stored in open air in my studio in the three AMS units together with the three hygrometers. I regularly checked the readings and noticed that the humidity levels were as expected dropping way slower than before. I let the test run for 6 days in total and then checked the results. The AMS with the previously used desiccant showed almost no change in humidity and ended up at 31%. This is just another sign that I should have replaced the silica already a while ago. The box with the fresh silica performed significantly better, but still only dropped from the 40% relative humidity I had in the studio to around 19% in the 140 hours of the test. The electric solid state dehumidifier performed the best. Not only did the humidity drop the fastest, but it also reduced down to 13%. The variations in humidity are, by the way, connected to the temperature. Every time it got warmer, the humidity in the box slightly increased, probably because this helped to draw water out of the polymer. One last interesting observation I had was that the dry box with the electric dehumidifier was always half a degree warmer than the other ones. The power consumption of these dehumidifiers is humidity dependent. The drier the air, the less power they use. On average I saw around 4 watts of consumption, which is still enough to slightly increase the temperature within the enclosure.
My test showed that the membrane dehumidifier seemed to have a lot of potential for storing filament. Initial drying is still something that should and needs to be done with heat, because even after a long time in the dry box you won't be able to remove all of the moisture from a polymer. Yet for storing solutions they are compact, they are maintenance free, they are silent and only produce a minimum amount of heat that could harm your filament long term. So why don't we see them already used in this application? Well, there is probably one main reason. The big unit right here is 169 euros, not even including a power supply. The smaller ones are cheaper, yet the one I used in my muesli container is still 36 bucks. Of course, these are prices for small quantities and will be lower if you order a thousand of them, but they are still more expensive in the short run than other drying solutions that use desiccant or even heat. Long term this might look different because you don't have to maintain it like silica desiccant. It doesn't damage your material by constantly heating it and it only uses minimum power. If I would let this thing run 24 7 it would consume 35 kilowatt hours per year which is around 10 euros on my annual power bill. Drying the two PLA spools alone used more than one kilowatt hour in only 12 hours. Yet the even more important point is reliability. With desiccant you always have the guesswork if it is still good or not. With a solid state dehumidifier the dry box should work very reliably for years. If you just think about how much money in wasted filament and time a print in an expensive material could cost where the spool wasn't properly kept dry, such a unit could pay for itself quickly. Still the membrane dehumidifiers are also not perfect and I can't even say a lot about their long term performance but they are fragile, they seem to degenerate quicker when certain materials are close and they will also let humidity in again when they are not powered. And I also have to mention that there is a potential oxygen accumulation within the dry box due to the electrolysis, which isn't only a fire risk one would need to assess but might even affect the filament. I also noticed that you need a bit of convection so that they can work efficiently because they seem to be a bit choked when I directly place the roll of material in the next slot to it. So I either need to leave this one free in the future or add a small fan somewhere for a bit of air circulation. I unfortunately don't have high hopes that we'll see these solid state dehumidifiers on affordable hobby equipment soon due to their price. But if you make professional grade storage solutions for filament, I definitely look into this technology. I for my part will definitely put one of them into a big sammler box where I can reliably keep larger quantities of filament dry and usable in the future. But what about you? How important is drying filament and also storing it dry in your opinion? And what do you think about this interesting technology? Leave a comment below. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this video interesting. If you want to support my work, head over to Patreon or become a YouTube member. Also check out the other videos in my library. I hope to see you in the next one, auf Wiedersehen and goodbye!